am I green screening over here? Yes. Does my shirt have green in it and it's going to get caught in the, in the chroma key? Yes. Uh, who gives a fuck, you know? Fuck it. That, that's kind of the ethos behind this record. <coughs> hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of Captain Beefheart and his magic band. Trout Mask Replica. Singer. Songwriter. Multi-instrumentalist. And poet. The good Captain Beefheart. One of rock music's true eccentrics and his unique personality, every shred of it, came through in his music, almost to an idiosyncratic fault. He's an artist whose previous work I admire quite a bit, his debut record with the Magic Band, Lick My Decals Off, Baby, Doc at the Radar Station, his 1980 record where he was still wild as hell. But Trout Mask Replica is probably his most widely known record. And it's a pretty polarizing album too. It's, it's not one of these uh, classic albums that just has across-the-board critical uh, and, and fan acclaim. It's not really the kind of album that elicits a mild reaction. In my personal experience, listeners of this album fall somewhere on this binary. Either they are hit with pure euphoria and they somehow get or understand the intricacies and the genius of this album, or you're going to think this thing is just total bullshit. There are a lot of albums that over time lose their potency, and that may be because the bands are no longer around anymore and they're irrelevant, the ideas and the sounds that they were putting forward are no longer trendy or inventive or cutting edge as they have now kind of grown old and numerous artists that have followed them have kind of repeated those ideas so they no longer sound fresh or innovative to newer listeners. But this is still an album that without a doubt I could show to numerous people who have never heard of it, young and old, and I will most likely get the response of, what are they doing? And again, even though I do say that people fall very hard on either one side or the other side of this fence, I personally do feel somewhat in the middle here. I do admire this record for its bold experimentation, how for its time it was incredibly cutting edge and riding the fringes along with artists like Frank Zappa, who Captain Beefheart was a frequent collaborator with him of Velvet Underground, Can. And despite this record being 50 years old, we've had about 50 years of music after this record. A few artists have actually stepped to the level of freakishness or even surpassed it, uh, what Captain Beefheart and his band presents here. Uh, believe me, only a few records kind of come to mind here, like maybe... Uh, Scott Walker Bishbosh. There's just so much to take in here from the disorienting instrumentation. Much of the time, the bass, the guitars, the drums don't even feel like they completely match or sync up. It's like each instrument is playing its own song and they just all happen to be on the same recording as you get sometimes these different wailing guitars in each channel and bass and drums that just hate each other so much that they just do not get along on the tempo. And when there is some harmony and some cohesion in the mix here, there's so much tension that it's almost like begrudging. And feeling even more out of place is Beefheart himself on these instrumentals. He was clearly added after the mayhem, and he doesn't so much participate in the insanity that the instrumentation brings as much as he just kind of does a funny lyrical jig on top of it. The vocal Vocals are mixed so high on most of these tracks that Beefheart just drowns the instrumentation out, especially since his vocal performances are very uh, <laughs> expressive, they're loud, they're raspy. Even when you try to listen past what he's doing and actually make sense, if you even can, of what the instrumentation is doing, your attention is just instantaneously going to veer back to Beefheart because he's just so here. And his performances are so wild and so uncontrolled on these songs, I bet you could probably switch vocal performances from one track to another track and the results would be mostly the same, still mad, still out of his mind, still cacophonous, still all over the place. Again, you cannot just take your ears off of the dude. He has the rasp of a dirty street beggar who has a chain smoking problem and swigs rubbing alcohol to pass the time. And the imagery in his lyrics are either weird abstract illusions or 
allusions to sort of tropes and lyrical cliches from roots and blues music, like on the song China Pig. There are numerous lyrics on here that are so random and unpredictable and just so nonsensical, so many non sequiturs, that this album surely is like the earliest or one of the earliest examples of music memes, as undoubtedly, uh, among the band themselves and among this album's earliest fans, I'm sure, uh, there were numerous lyrical moments that could have just been repeated and, and laughed at until the end of time. Fast and bulbous, neon meat dream of an octafish. Another reason I have to respect this record are the countless artists and albums that Beefheart and this album would go on to influence. And I also like the fact that this record is a loud and an explosive reminder of, hey, let's break the rules. The rules don't matter. We don't gotta follow these rules. Smash everything! And in the recording and the writing process of this album, I can imagine the incredible difficulty, especially in 1969, of trying to market, sell, and just make an album that is this dissonant and goes this far and this hard against the rules of traditional rock blues, and jazz music. We're talking about musicians here who can play coherent songs and can write coherent songs and have had years of playing in a band and practice, and now they're kind of breaking all of that apart, avoiding all that training, and trying to make something that makes almost no sense. And you've also got to take into account that the brain favors uh, very much patterns and predictability in music. So they're also working against that natural tendency to employ patterns into the songs that they're writing. And patterns and grooves and harmony and musical coherence does show up on this record at points, but you can tell even when it does, the band is trying their hardest to fight against it or sour it or like mutate it in some kind of way. So this record is so horrifyingly unpleasant that it's almost admirable, it's like awe-inspiring. So that's kind of the style of this record, that's the sound of this record, that's uh, in a sense a little bit of the context of this record, which I think is bulletproof, you know, this album has earned its pedestal in the history of modern music. But when it comes to my visceral emotional reaction when listening to this album, I kind of swing back and forth between this is all right to outright hatred. This thing is 80 minutes, that is too long. And this thing gets really annoying really fast. And believe me, I know that and I have known that for a very long time, which is why this is the first time I've forced myself to listen to this thing all the way through in a long time. I hate the mixing on this record. When there is mixing, because some of the tracks here are just like weird, noisy, lo-fi detours that just, Ugh. And even on the tracks that aren't particularly lo-fi, I just kind of giggle at the idea that there was a producer and an engineer involved in the recording process of this project. Uh, th this album makes Velvet Underground's White Light, White Heat sound like a big budget production. There's so much on this record that I guess in a way I could call filler. That is if uh, the other tracks on here didn't feel or sound equally as messy or just <laughs> nonsensical. I find a lot of this album's uh, experiments to be kind of goofy and obnoxious and childish. Uh, I find the more studied playing and the more muscular playing and the more intricate experiments of a band like um, King Crimson, like on Lark's Tongues and Aspic, for example, to be way more intriguing. Also, when it comes to experimental rock in this era, I'd rather listen to, I don't know, some Zappa or just other Beefheart records. The musical tornado on this album, the only people who are truly in on it were the people who helped make this recording. Everybody else just has to kind of look at it perplexed or just kind of feel dumb listening to it because there's some kind of depth to it that they don't understand. But maybe that's just kind of a shortcoming of uh, the average music listener or the average uh, art patron who seems to think that there has to be a meaning, that there has to be some kind of, you know, significant uh, thought uh, behind everything. Which is clearly not uh, the case here. Uh, I mean, th there are so many absurd moments on this record, and Captain Beefheart and company seem well aware of the absurdity. Uh, when I do enjoy this album, and occasionally I do, I've found the best way to approach it is with a very 
strong and absurd sense of humor. Especially since Captain Beefheart and his band uh, were so focused on making something so wildly different that this could almost be categorized as a novelty record. You can't listen to tracks like Big Joan Sets Up or little moments like the, uh, uh, the, the, the Rocket Morton sketch on this thing and not hear that there's a very intentional sense of humor to this record. Now there are spots though that I think are legitimately interesting or cool where the instrumentation smooths out a little bit and I hear maybe a few cool riffs or dissonant guitar harmonies or uh, some off-kilter grooves or maybe I'm just kind of charmed in a way by Beefheart's insane morbid, hilarious ramblings, like on Frown Land, or Sweet Sweet Bulbs, or uh, Moonlight in Vermont, which in a way, I think is one of the more coherent tracks on the record. My Human Gets Me Blues is probably as proto as proto-punk gets. And I also think this track has one of Beefheart's most electrifying performances on the entire thing. Uh, I like the track Dolly's Car is kind of a standalone dissonant guitar piece. The moments where we just get Beefheart's vocals on this LP weird me out a little bit. There are plenty of uh, interesting ideas that I could pull out of this thing and take kind of seriously, but doing that is kind of uh, like just just shoving your hand into a pricker bush and trying to pull gems out only to just make your fist and your arm bloody in the process. Looking for moments on this record to kind of just dissect out of the context of the greater cacophony uh, is just not how to enjoy this album, even if, you know, enjoying this record from beginning to end <laughs> is even possible. This isn't really a record to scratch your chin to and go, hmm, yes, yes, ooh, ooh, it's so deep. This thing is a shit show. And it's, it's very much self-aware of that shit show ness of it. And if there is something I can say about this record that I do like consistently from beginning to end, I like how overwhelming it is. And I like how overstimulating it is to the point where, like, it just fries my brain. It's so loud. It's so colorful. It's so obnoxious. It's so... Uh, just dizzying and unsettling that you can't really put it on and do anything else, which is something unique about this album. It sort of sours just any atmosphere it comes into contact with and becomes the focal piece. This isn't really something that you can just kind of put on as a little bit of mood music as you, uh, I don't know, like... Uh, assemble a puzzle. This is very demanding music, and it's not particularly music that once you start giving it your full attention, it just instantaneously becomes gratifying and fulfilling, you know? It's kind of like inviting a uh, hundred parrots into your room. Very crazy parrots all on their respective perches just going, bah, 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 fast and bulbous! So <laughs> let it be known that, uh, uh, what this album brings to the table is is not what your average album brings. Uh, and while it might not always be uh, sweet to the tongue or the ears or um, even digestible, as uh, if, if this record were food and you had to consume the whole thing, I imagine a great deal of it would uh, be thrown up later. Um, still, though, a uh, unique experience. Can't deny that unique experience. And, you know, sometimes that's really what classic records are all about, because even when that unique experience might not be particularly good, it may go on to leave a huge impact on a lot of listeners, a lot of artists who go on to make a piece of art or enjoy a piece of art in a way that they would not have before, just because they came into contact with a little piece of madness like this. Uh, those are my thoughts on this record. Thank you for watching this review. You're the best. Captain Beefheart Tran! Zition. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? <laughs> You're the best. Thank you. Bye. Forever.